Hi, I'm Nicola Walsh. I'm a chemistry teacher here at the Dublin Academy of Education. And today we're going to have a look at the Bohr structure of the atom, electronic configuration, and what could potentially come up this year in the exam. Now, what we are anticipating is that we're going to get a long question on the Bohr structure and the Bohr theory. So I would be aiming 12 to 15 marks on the theory alone for this. Now, that could be offset a little bit. We'll know a little bit more in November when we see the actual paper, but I'm banking on a big question coming up this year for you. So, Bohr and emission spectra are really important. We're also going to have a look at sublevels and orbitals because your terminology and telling the difference between these two is quite important. Writing electronic configuration, and it's important to know that this whole topic is worth about 6% of your exam, and it's a really nice one, so it's a good one to start off with. And it's also worth noting, know this one inside and out for this year. Right, so and we're going to start off with the mandatory experiment. Now this is everybody's favourite mandatory experiment because you get to set stuff on fire. And you feel like Harry Potter for five minutes. Right, the only thing that they can conceivably ask you about this particular mandatory experiment is how did you do it and what did you see? So it's a really nice one to do in the first week when you're getting used to the lab. So for six marks, tell me what you did. You dipped a damp wooden splint into the salt. And what will be bold in the mark scheme is damp wooden splint. It's damp because when you stick the wooden splint in the Bunsen burner, you don't want the splint to catch fire. You only want to see the salt combust. Now, then you hold the damp wooden splint in the blue flame of a Bunsen burner. And you need to specify blue flame. If you don't, if you just say stick it in the flame of a Bunsen burner, you can't have it in the orange flame because you can't see the colours that are produced. As you can see from the results table, sodium burns with a yellow flame. If you put sodium in the yellow flame of a Bunsen burner, you're not going to know is that sodium or is it the Bunsen burner. So it must be in the blue flame to let you see what's happening. Now, that's your six marks. The results, now, these you just have to learn. On your notes, I've left a nice handy little box at the bottom of page six for you to come up with some sort of an acronym to remember this. The most commonly asked ones are potassium, barium, and copper. They're the three biggies, but you do need to know all six. Now, be careful with your language in describing the colors of these. Lithium burns with a crimson flame, not red because strontium is red and they look very different when you burn them side by side. Crimson is more of like a pink. So don't say lithium burns with a red flame because it's wrong. Potassium burns with a lilac flame. So it's a really pale purple one. And you'd also see this if you put a piece of potassium metal in water and then it ignites, you see it burn with a lilac flame. Barium is green, strontium is red, copper is like a blue-green, it's a mixture of both. Now, if copper, copper comes up, you need both, not just one or the other, you must say both colours. And then sodium is yellow. The most difficult one to see when you're doing the mandatory experiments is this one. Um, because it's yellow and when you stick the splint in the flame anyway, sometimes you'll see that the splint will catch fire anyway. So it's very difficult to tell, is the flame from the sodium or is it from the split? But it does burn with a yellow flame. And the way to remember that is street lamps, the old style ones, not the new ones, they are sodium lamps and they have a yellow bulb in them. 